Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Victor Herbert musical hit, The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Eileen Farrell. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On stage tonight is one of the happiest shows ever to hit Broadway, The Red Mill. Eileen Farrell is in the costume of a Dutch girl in the charming village of Kotvik and Z. As for me, I'm going to slip into a checkered vest, clap a straw hat on my head, and call myself Kid Connor. You know what my partner's name is? Con Kidder. And it all begins in another old Dutch village named, uh, well, let me see if I can pronounce it. Uh, ah, yes, New York. In old New York, in old New York, the peace rocks always find. They're sweet and fair and longest where the maids of Manhattan for mine. You cannot see in gay Paris, in London or in court. The queen to me on any street in old New York. Say, Con, what what do you want to go to Europe for? Romance, boy, romance. The European girls be crazy about you. Oh, no, wait a minute, not so fast. You know, there are plenty of lovely dishes right here in the good old USA. If a spare afternoon you should happen to have and you start on a leisurely stroll up Fifth Avenue, there is where with haughty air you'll see them as they walk. Velvets and laces and sables and folding them. Really, you'll nearly drop dead on beholding them. Lucky's the earl who can marry a girl from Fifth Avenue, New York. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crops always fine. They're sweet and fair, and on the square, the maze of Manhattan for mine. You cannot see in gay Paris, in London, or in court. The queens you'll meet on any street in old New York. Just the same, kid. I'd like to make the trip. Well, you could go to Paris and marry a French countess. Could or go to Holland and marry a Dutch duchess. Hey, when is the boat sail? Tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha, we're off. Goodbye, New York. Goodbye, New York. We're sailing on our way. Farewell to Queens and Bowling Greens and Brooklyn and Battery Bay. We'll make our home in Nice and Rome and Amsterdam and York. A kiss for each and every peach. Goodbye, New York. This is Holland. Hiya, Holland. Hey, uh, Con, we got to find a place to sleep tonight. It's got to be cheap sleep. We're broke. Yeah. <laughs> Let's ask that little Fräulein over there, huh? Okay. Hey, Mabel. Yeah? Were you addressing me, gentlemen? Uh, do you have any idea where we could sleep tonight? Well, I really don't know. Well, how about that red mill? I bet it's real warm and comfortable. Oh, yes. Very cozy. You two and the ghost. You mean the mill is haunted? Every night at midnight, the ghost of a poor, unhappy bride walks through the mill, searching for her lost lover, Hendrick. 
Thank you and good night, Red Mill. Uh, what's your name? Gretchen. Well, why do you look so wretched, Gretchen? <laughs> well, tomorrow's my wedding day. And tomorrow, by this time, I'll be the wife of the fat old governor of Zealand. Well, if you don't love him, why marry him? Well, my father's forcing me. Oh, now, look, a pretty girl like you shouldn't worry. Of course not. The Rover boys are here. Hey, I got an idea. Yeah? She can't marry the governor of Zealand tomorrow. If she marries me right now... Why, you hardly know me. <laughs> Can you think of a better way to get acquainted? I just don't understand how this has happened so fast. You don't, huh? You haven't seen very many musical comedies, have you, girl? Well, I've been waiting a long time for somebody young and handsome and exciting to come along and sweep me off my feet, so... Uh... If you'd say that you love but me... Love but me, only me. What a paradise life would be. I said it, and you know what love is. Love is a strange little elfin sprite, blessed with the deadliest aim. Shooting his arrows to left and right, bagging the rarest game. Filling our hearts with a glad surprise, almost too good to be true. And still can you tell me, why do you love me? Only because you are you, dear. Not that I am fair, Not that you dear. are fair, Not that I am true. Not that you are true. Not my golden Not hair, your golden hair, hair Not my dear. eyes of blue. Not your eyes of blue. When we ask the reason, this country when they want to get married, huh? To the Burgomaster. Oh. But my father's the Burgomaster here, uh -oh. so we'll have to go to the next town. Just one moment, my fine young friend. Father! Have you forgotten, my dear Gretchen, you're not marrying this silly young American, but His Excellency the Governor of Zealand. Back where we come from in little old New York, a girl can marry anyone she chooses. Well, this is little old Catwick on Z. And Gretchen, since you seem to be so fond of this old red mill, I think I shall lock you up here overnight. Oh, no! And here you shall stay until the governor arrives to lead you to the altar. Oh, Father, please, I'm frightened. In you go. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't lock her up. You can't do this. Why, you can't force it again. Hmm, I guess he can. Good day, gentlemen. I think I've seen that guy someplace before. Yeah, on a beer mug. Hey, what's that? Oh, just the old mill turning. Looks like a skeleton, doesn't it? Waving its arms in the moonlight. I want to go home. Gretchen! Are you all right? Hey, Gretchen! Con, she's gone. 
there's somebody up there in the tower of the mill. Listen. Are you all right? Who oh. else would it be? Hey, Gretch, how did you get way up there? I climbed up the stairs inside the mill. Have you, have you seen the ghost? No, not yet. Uh, when you see her, ask her if she's got a friend. A live one. Gretch and I can't see your face in the moonlight, but I, I know you're as lovely as the moonbeams themselves. Moonbeam shining soft above, let me beg of you, find the one I dearly love, tell her I'll ever be We've got to get Gretchen out of there. And, and I've got an idea. Watch the blades in the mill. Uh-huh. Now, suppose you grab hold of one of the wings when it sweeps close to the ground. Uh-huh. You hang on to it, swing on up, and rescue Gretchen out of the tower window on the way down. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, all right, then. All right, I'll do it. Gretchen, can, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to swing up in one of the arms of the mill and rescue you. Oh, be careful. Here I go. Oh, Kate, come on, boy! Oh! Oh! Gretchen, lean out! Oh, farther, lean out, all over! Hang on! Oh! Ground floor, everybody out! Oh, thank you for getting me out of that awful mill. Now we've got to get away from your father. Let's go to the next town and get married, huh? Now stay here and stall the burgomaster. Oh, good, Con. <laughs> when he locks the door tomorrow morning, he's going to find nothing but echoes inside the old red mill. And when he asks a reason... You.
Before we continue with the Red Mill, Mr. E. Roland Harriman, chairman of the American National Red Cross, has a brief message for all of us. Mr. Harriman. The symbol of the Red Cross stands for the good neighbor. It stands for an idealism that is translated into friendly service to people through the Red Cross. Like our great railroads gather and carry the enormous productive output of our nation from coast to coast, so the Red Cross gathers the goodwill and generosity of a host of good neighbors and carries practical help to the troubled and the suffering. Through membership in the Red Cross, you, the people of America, stand by the side of the victims of a tornado, a hurricane or a flood, extending help to the ill, the weary and the homeless. To our valiant men and women in uniform, many of them still serving in far-flung lands, you bring comfort when family emergencies cause deep anxiety. Through your Red Cross, you furnish life-saving blood for the mother in childbirth, the patient in surgery, the accident victim, or the hospitalized veteran. The strength of the Red Cross, its power to do good, is your strength, because you provide its sinews and its spirit. And through your membership contributions, you are there when the Red Cross serves. In 1954, we seek not only funds for Red Cross work, but also many millions of additional members so that good neighbors all over America can join hands to serve their communities and their nation. This is the call of your fellow men who need help. Answer the call, join and serve. We're ready for Act Two of Victor Herbert's The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star Eileen Farrell, with Jack Kirkwood as the Burgomaster and Peter Leeds as Khan. <laughs> some grits and you look even lovelier now than you did in the starlight tell me have you said that to many girls oh sure but i never meant it before you see if you wanted to settle down with one girl so in america i change girls 365 times a year every day a different girl why not i don't eat the same egg every morning for breakfast <laughs> Every day is ladies' day with me. I'm quite at their disposal all the while. And my pleasure, it is double if they come to me in trouble. For I always find a way to make them smile. The little darlings. No doubt I should have married long ago. It's the proper thing to do, you'll all agree. But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on one. So every day is ladies' day with me. It's a frightful thing to think of all the hearts that I have broken. Although each one fell in love with me without the slightest token. Though among my vulgar creditors I'm fearfully in debt. It's because I have afforded anything that I could get. But I must say I've enjoyed the best of what there is in life I've been lucky in my love affairs I've never had a wife And I don't begrudge the little dears Those necklaces of pearls All the money that I've ever saved Is what I've spent on girls For every day is ladies' day with me Every day is ladies' day with me I'm quite at their disposal all the while my pleasure, it is double if they come to me in trouble For I always find a way to make them smile The little darlings No doubt I should have married long ago Promise you should have married long ago It's the proper thing to do, you'll all agree It's the thing to do, you'll all agree But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on fun So Every day is Ladies' Day with me. Every day is Ladies' Day. So, every day is Ladies' Day with me. Well, that's how it was before I met you. 
And now every day is Gretchen's day for me. Oh, that's so wonderful. Now I'm worried about what's going to happen when my father unlocks the old red mill. Oh, don't worry. My buddy will take care of him, all right. Oh, good morning, Mr. Berger, mister. Good morning. What brings you out to the mill so early? Just checking up on my daughter. Well, too late. She's already checked out. What? <laughs> where is she? Gretchen, where are you? Gretchen! I must find her. I'll spare no expense. Uh, no expense? I understand Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are in this country visiting. I believe I'll hire them. Well, let me get them for you. I'll get Holmes and Watson on this job for you right away. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Connor. Well, we aren't Mr. and Mrs. yet. No, we, we couldn't afford to get married. Oh, boy, have I got the cure for that. Put on this costume quick. Oh, wait a minute. I don't get it. I'm going to be Sherlock Holmes, and you're going to be Dr. Watson. What? We'll collect a fee to find this lost girl, enough to get you married. Where'll we go after we're married? Oh, uh, I know a wonderful spot. I have an idea you're thinking of the same place I am. In the beautiful Isle of a Dream, dear, there is never a sorrow or pain. Every trouble and care quickly vanishes there, and all is made happy. And we'll sail o'er the sea Where for just you and me There's a home in the island of dreams So we'll meet this cold wind Already, you can stop being Romeo and start being Dr. Watson. Well, Dr. Watson, how do I look? Oh, this is very Baker Street, very Baker Street, Mr. Jones, very Baker Street indeed, yes. Gentlemen, aha! You are the burgomaster of Catwick and Z. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. How did you know me, Mr. Holmes? Well, elementary, my dear burgomaster, elementary. I want you to meet my eminent colleague, the celebrated Dr. Watson. Yes, yes. <clears throat> From the way he talks, he must be British. If he were any more... <laughs> if he were any more British, he couldn't talk at all. <laughs> Now, Mr. Holmes, uh, Dr. Watson, uh, how much will you charge to find my daughter? Well, our price depends on the difficulty of the job. Is your daughter young and beautiful? Oh, yes. Then it will be very expensive, because you know beautiful young ladies are very hard to find these days. How much shall we charge, Dr. Watson? <laughs> uh, Dr. Watson says, and I quote, 550... Well, Fifty-five guilders. <laughs> it's the deal. Here's the money. But I demand that you bring my daughter to this very spot no later than four o'clock this afternoon, in time for her wedding to the governor of Zealand. <laughs> Quick, Dr. Watson, go get married. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, in 15 seconds, it will be 4 o'clock. If you don't produce my daughter by then, I'll have you thrown in jail. Hey, Mr. Berger, mister, I don't think you like me. Your time is up, you swindler. Just a minute, listen. Future of 
Is that my daughter? Do you believe in the ghost of the old red mill? Oh, certainly not. Then that's your daughter. Gretchen, you're just in time for your wedding to the governor. There's been a little change in plans, Mr. Burgomaster. Mm -hmm. You see, I've been going around with Mr. Connor. Mm-hmm. On windmills. And we liked it so much, we got married. Mm -hmm. I, you, I, 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 I think the Burgomaster's just blown a gasket. Gretchen, <laughs> let's get away from here, huh? Where'll we go? Well, may I recommend the wonderful spot called Manhattan? Could someone from Holland be happy there? Well... Peter Stuyvesant liked it. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crop's always fine. They're sweet and fair, and on the square, the maids of Manhattan for my evenings you cannot see in gay Paris, in London, or in Cork. The queens you meet are any street in Farrell will be back in just one moment. Meanwhile, our thanks to Jack Kirkwood, Peter Leeds, and our entire company. The Red Mill, with music by Victor Herbert and book and lyrics by Henry Blossom, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Who is the busiest, most useful citizen in your community? Well, chances are you couldn't make a better nomination than your railroad. Like you and your family, every citizen, businessman, merchant, manufacturer, and farmer depends on the railroads to supply his essential transportation needs. Yes, and your railroad is not only a busy and useful citizen. It's a good citizen, a good neighbor. Interested in local and civic affairs, active taxpayers and employers, important purchasers of the things your town sells. The railroads that serve you are, in every sense, one of the most valuable contributors to the welfare of your community, as they are to the nation as a whole. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again, ladies and gentlemen, is the enchanting Miss Eileen Farrell. It was wonderful going around with you tonight, Gordon, on the windmill, that is. <laughs> well, any time you want to be rescued, you just let me know, Eileen. Who are you kidding with next Monday night, Mr. Connor? Well, uh, Lucille Norman is our guest, and this is the kind of music we're going to be singing. Hey, it's a special show for St. Patrick's Day. Life and the music of the unforgettable Tom Moore, Eileen. And our show is called The Minstrel Boy. Sounds just wonderful. We'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Eileen. And come back again real soon, huh? All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and The Minstrel Boy, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> The Red Mill was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Tonight, the voice of Firestone features...